Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, where I recommend movies and then talk about them. Last time, we took a look at Sonny Chiba in the Street Fighter trilogy. So, uh, I, I finished this video, I had it exported, I had it uploaded, this was ready to go out to Patreon, and I wake up this morning, and Sonny Chiba has died. He, he passed away last night, which is some very unfortunate timing. Um, so I thought we would... I, I, I would stop here and put a little insert of uh, me, me saying a few words in remembrance. Otherwise, uh, this video might seem in poor taste. I've got paint all over my arms. Uh, don't, don't get concerned. It's not a rash. It's not a bruise. It's paint. So, um, uh, R.I.P. Sonny Chiba. Great actor. Will be missed. Um, I, I don't know what else to say, but... I, I felt like I should stop and acknowledge, like, whoops, Sonny Chiba died the day before I was making a Street Fighter video public. <sighs> R.I.P. Sonny Chiba. I've had to improvise with the marquee. The, the, this T right here is just two upside-down L's stacked on top of each other because there's too many T's. This only came with three T's. And I needed a fourth one. So we've had to improvise a little. Uh, Street Fighter is the story of Sonny Chiba, who is the greatest fighter in the whole entire world. And he beats up a bunch of bad guys. That's the plot. That's the whole story. <laughs> I, I mean, the first movie has more of a plot than the other two. The first movie, he's like hired by this gang to fight this other gang, but then the gang that hired him, like, betrays him, so he joins the gang that they're fighting to take them out. It's a, it's more of a plot than the other two movies. It is a pretty thin plot. Uh, it's, it's mostly just Sonny Chiba running around beating the ever-loving shit out of people. Honestly, you can see its influence on later, more comedic, violent movies. Uh, and and the this first movie, Street Fighter. Street Fighter, I actually did really enjoy. I really liked it. I, I would say my biggest criticism of it is that it's just not ridiculous enough. I wish it was a lot sillier, you know? Because they already have, they have, like, him punching a guy in, a, in the head, and then you see, like, an x-ray of his head, and seeing his skull get cracked. It's the center image here on the, the box. I'm trying to get it so the light isn't reflecting right on it. You can see him just punching a dude's head. And there's a lot of silly kills like that. <laughs> um... A lot of very fun, very silly kills in this movie. So I wish it had gone just a little further, right? Just a little bloodier, just a little more over the top. I, I think it would have been a lot more enjoyable. Um, the, the thing I want to compare it to is uh, Ricky O, the story of Ricky, um, which I've had, I think, two people recommend to me. In, like, the last week or so, um, it might have just been one person, but I, I, I've gotten, I think, two recommendations for Ricky O, the story of Ricky in the last week, and it's like, yes, I am familiar with Ricky O. It's a great movie, and I love it. It's not on Blu-ray, which is weird. I, I want to get a Blu-ray of it, but there's no Blu-ray, um... I might eventually just settle and get the DVD and show it, but that is definitely something I would show for movie nights. I love Riccio. Um, this is like... Because Riccio is obviously sort of a comedy. The violence is all ridiculously over the top. And this is like... The serious version of Riccio. This is... 
Ricky O not played as a joke. It's it's much more grounded than Ricky O. I hmm. I'm not going to say that it's it's 100% realistic. There is silly stuff in it, but um it's it's uh, for the most part, for the most part it seems realistic. Right? Like I'm not a doctor. I couldn't confidently say that all of the moves in this movie could actually happen that he could actually kill people in the ways he kills people in this movie but it it's like I do know that with Ricky Ho I watch Ricky Ho and I'm like okay that wouldn't happen in real life I watch this and I'm like that could happen in real life probably not but it could stars Sonny Chiba who we've seen previous in Wolf Guy and Rage Lycanthrope. Um, probably best known in the West for his role in Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. Because, of course, of course Tarantino's a Sonny Chiba fan. Um, you, you can see the Street Fighter influence on a lot of his works, especially Kill Bill. There's definitely some Street Fighter influence to Kill Bill. Uh, he, he plays the sword maker in Kill Bill Volume 1. So, uh, outside of Kill Bill, this is probably his most popular movie. He's very well known for the Street Fighter series. Um, big, big influence on a lot of other, like, kung fu-related stuff. Weirdly, despite being called Street Fighter, I think the video game this was a big influence on was Mortal Kombat, Right, there's the you you can you watch this and you're like, oh, this was th this is where Mortal Kombat got it. I mean, down to the punching a guy in the skull and then you see an X-ray of his skull. Um, all that that's mm, mostly later Mortal Kombat games, but it, yeah, it's it's very Mortal Kombat. I don't know if Street Fighter was influenced by this or not. I assume not. I assume if they had known about these movies, they wouldn't have called the game Street Fighter. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they, they knew about the movie and called the game that anyway. Who knows? It's Japan. They're both from Japan. Maybe they have different titles in Japan. Maybe this is called something else. Like, this and Street Fighter have different Japanese titles. And then when they came to America, it was just like, nah, Street Fighter. These are both Street Fighter. Uh, yeah, I, I love the first Street Fighter movie. I, I would recommend the first Street Fighter movie. Especially if you're into, like, kung fu movies. And especially really violent kung fu movies. Because... I, I think I've said this before, but I'm always a little disappointed with kung fu movies because I feel like they they sort of... Mm, I, I feel like they're not violent enough. I, I want more death in my <laughs> kung fu movies. I, I prefer a kung fu movie with more blood, more action, more death. Um... They're repairing the apartment next door. I don't know how much of that you can hear, but they... Like, the the guy who lived there, I made a joke about it in the Cool Cat video. I wasn't joking. I, I had a really creepy neighbor for a while, and he fucking tore the apartment up. So I don't know how much of that you can hear, but... They're fixing my creepy neighbor's apartment, because they finally fucking evicted him after he broke the door. Moving on... Uh, Street Fight, Return of the Street Fighter, the second Street Fighter movie. Uh, in this one, uh, Sonny Chiba, what's his character's name? I don't think I caught his name. T this says Terry Tsurugi, but I watched the Japanese versions, and I'm pretty sure his name is not Terry in the Japanese version. Anyways, Terry is hired to kill some people who are poking around in mob affairs, but then one of the people he has to kill is, uh, an old friend of his. It's actually someone he met in the first movie, uh, who, who he, like, he's like, ah, oh, I can't kill him because 
he's the only person that's ever understood me, you know? He, he respects Kung Fu the way I respect Kung Fu, and therefore I can't kill him out of respect. Um, and so, you know, that causes problems for him. Now the mob's coming after him to, like, Hey, but you, you said you would kill him for us. Darn you, Sonny Chiba. Terry. Um, this one and the last one I don't think are as good as the first Street Fighter. I think of the three, Street Fighter is the best one. But this is okay. This is... You know, it, it's it's still got some fun kills, for sure. That's fun violence. Good, good violent movie. Sonny Chiba drags a bunch of people into a sauna. He, he locks a bunch of people in a sauna and then turns up the heat to a dangerous degree. So he just, like, boils these people alive. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of fucked up, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> So I, I would not recommend this one as strongly as I would the first one, but, uh, you know, it, it is still pretty fun. I, I think if you liked the first one, maybe check this one out as well. And I would say the same for the third movie. So the, the third movie, Street Fighter's Last Revenge, in this one, Terry has to... Uh, fight another gang. Honestly, like, I... There's nothing more going on in this one. This one has the least plot of the three. It's like, there's a gang that wants to kill him. Yeah, man, there's always been a gang that wants to kill him. That's... That is the Street Fighter trilogy. Uh, so there's a gang that wants to kill him in this one. Um, and he does... There is some, like teaming up with this girl, and she wants to help him take down this gang, and he's like, yeah, but you're, you're not as good as me, you know, we, we, I'm, I'm, I know more than you, <laughs> like, I've been doing this longer, uh, you, you need some time before you're prepared to do all of this, but, he eventually gives in and lets her help, and so that's a big part of the movie. Yeah, this one's fun, too. This one gets a little, like, even wilder <laughs> than the first two, because there's, like, this, this magician, and he, like, uses magic to, like, cut metal in half and stuff, and he's, he's, like... He comes in and he starts, like, using magic on people. And at first I'm like, wait, are they adding, like, supernatural stuff to the Street Fighter series now? And then it's revealed that, no, he's not magic. He has, like, a giant laser attached to his chest. And I'm like, I'm not sure that's less ridiculous. I think a laser and magic... Make about as much sense in this case. So, but Sonny Chiba takes the laser from him, and I was so ready for Sonny Chiba to just start lasering motherfuckers. And he never uses it! And I'm like, why would you have him take the laser and not use the laser on people? That's, that would be so fucking cool, and it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. He doesn't laser anyone. Although, the guy who had the laser gets, uh, cremated while he's still alive, so that's fun. <laughs> this, uh, Shout Select Collector's Edition of the Street Fighter Collection. This, so I, I had actually decided to show the Street Fighter series before this got released, and, and then... So, so I, I had the Street Fighter series on my schedule for movie nights, because they're all on, like, Tubi, I think, and Prime Video. But then then Shout is like Shout Factory is like, hey, here's a Blu-ray release of uh, the Street Fighter trilogy, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll take it. Give it to me. I want it. <laughs> Got some interviews and stuff on here. I, I haven't watched a lot of the... I haven't actually watched any of the bonus features, but... 
They've got it's it's some nice transfers of the movie. Uh, in a few cases, scenes were like cut from the American version that have been reintegrated into this Blu-ray set, and they're like it's it's especially noticeable in uh, Street Fighter's Last Revenge. They're like, hey, sorry. Sometimes this footage looks crappy because there's no good print of the scenes that have been cut, right? We we can do a 2K restoration of most of this, but then, like, these little parts in here, we're gonna have to use some standard definition stuff. Um, and it's it's not really noticeable in the first two movies. In, in Street Fighter's Last Revenge, I was like, oh... Oh, this is noticeably lower quality than the rest of the film. Frankly, b because I can tell which parts got cut, I'm kind of like, wait, why did this get cut? And I have to assume that it's, like, timing, I guess? Like, like the American, the American, they wanted the American version to be shorter, right? They, they trimmed down the American version because... Us poor, dumb Americans can't sit through an hour and 45 minute movie. That's too long for us. Make it an hour 20. Um, <laughs> because it's, it's not like they were cutting the really violent stuff. The violent stuff was staying in for the most part. There was obviously some stuff cut. Although, I think the first two Street Fighter movies were rated X. Upon release, in like 1974, the MPAA is like, no, this is rated X. And I'm like, how? This is not that bad, actually. It's, it's, it's violent, it's bloody, but it's not that violent or that bloody. And there's not even any nudity in the first one. There is nudity in the second and third one, but there's, I don't remember any nudity in the first one, so... Yeah, I don't know why you would give Street Fighter or any of its sequels an X rating. This is R, for sure. Hard R, even. But not X. I, I don't know how you could ever give this an X rating. <laughs> and and it does say on the back here, like, it's it's been re-rated since then. Because it's been re-released since then. And it now holds an R rating. Um, except for Street Fighter's Last Revenge... Because they have the original Japanese cut of that, and the original Japanese cut is unrated. So, right now, Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2 are rated R, but the original Japanese cut of the third one remains unrated. Although it'd probably still be an R. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the Street Fighter trilogy. That was... I, I got through those way faster than... <laughs> A lot of other movies. It's because there's not that much plot, and and I don't have to explain the characters every time. I, I can't talk about Sonny Chiba all three times. I, I talked about Sonny Chiba. There's nothing else to really mention past the first one. I, it's not a different character or different actors in all of these. So, yeah, A, it's easier to speak about a trilogy, and B, this is a trilogy that doesn't have a lot of substance, I guess? There's not a lot of plot. There's not a lot of story. It's mostly action, which, you know, I'm fine with that. I I love a good movie that is mostly action. I was just watching hold on, the Lone Wolf and Cub movies the other day. Um, those are mostly, like, fighting. It's, it's, like, the loosest plots just to justify... Putting bodies in the ground. Uh, yeah, I would recommend Street Fighter. The first Street Fighter is really good. Uh, the second two, they're fun. They have their moments. Um, if you really like the first one, then I'd say check out the other two. Uh, if, if you don't really enjoy the first one, the, the other two aren't going to have anything for you. Um, I would recommend this nice uh, Arrow video box set. Or, excuse me, Shout Factory box set. <laughs> Arrow Video made a different box set. No hints, no spoilers. 
So, last time I asked about your favorite video game movie, and I actually got a lot of responses on this one. Um, my favorite video game movie is probably the first Mortal Kombat movie. Um, I, I wish it was violent. I wish it had the violence of the games. But, uh, of all of them, it's... It's the most fun, it's the most charming, and it's probably the most accurate to the characters. Um, I, I, Mortal Kombat is kind of an odd one. It's one of those movies that I'm, I go back and forth on whether it's, like, funny bad or just, like, actually enjoyable. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure how ironic my enjoyment of Mortal Kombat is. I think it's a little of both. I think it's a little of both. It's just a generally very charming movie, even though it's pretty bad in some places. John August seems to agree with me. He also said the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. Um, so, uh, thank you for that one, John. I agree. Mortal Kombat, good video game movie. He, he does point out that it influenced some of the future games, which... Alright, yeah, fair enough, but that's not always a good thing. <laughs> I think most Mortal Kombat, like, like, the, hmm, was it the cartoon or was it the live-action show? The cartoon or the live-action show had a character that later appeared in the games. But, you know, like, we could talk about, like, the Star Wars Holiday Special. That changed Star Wars canon, and it still fucking sucks. I don't think changing the canon of a series is necessarily a good thing. <laughs> like, spin-offs that, that influence the main plot, that's not always a good thing. But we'll make an exception for Mortal Kombat, because it's a fun movie. Henry Koslick pops in with the first Pokemon movie, which... I mean, I'll give you credit, that is a good movie, but I almost wouldn't count that as a video game movie. I know Pokemon started as a video game, it was a video game before anything else, but I also feel like the Pokemon brand is very all-encompassing. I mean, Pokemon, the first movie, was based on the TV show, so... I don't know, I just, I feel like it's one of those brands that is just sort of multimedia now. I don't consider the Pokemon movies video game movies, but I, I, that does sort of open up a can of worms. That is sort of a, a debate we could have. Do the Pokemon movies count as video game movies? Because if so... Yeah, Pokemon the first movie is actually a pretty good movie. I probably would beat out most other video game movies. I I I think about like Mewtwo's speech at the end of that movie all the fucking time. The, the like I I now realize that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It's what you do with that gift that's important and I'm like that's fucking deep. And this is a Pokemon movie. <laughs> like, that's some of the most profound shit I have ever heard. And it's from a Pokemon movie. Rob Jackson chimes in with the new Sonic movie, which, um... I understand that. I'm, uh... In terms of, like making an actually good movie instead of something that is just ironically enjoyable, I would say Sonic comes the closest to being a genuinely good movie. But frankly, I think I enjoy some of the bad video game movies more than Sonic. Like, I definitely enjoy the Super Mario Bros. movie more than I enjoy the Sonic movie, even though objectively... It is a worse movie. <laughs> God, uh, I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce this. That's a lot of letters and numbers. Jason V6 HO3C. Am I, is there a way I'm supposed to pronounce that? Jason V6 Hothric. 
Jason chimes in with, in the name of the king, uh, a, a dungeon siege tale. Which, I think that's one of the sequels. Is, is that what the first one's called? I, I do, th mm, the first one might have had a, a subtitle. Let's check Google. Okay, okay. Looks like that was the first one. I, uh, I haven't seen In the Name of the King, but I just kind of fucking hate Uva Bowl movies. Like, I, they're not even funny. They're not even funny. Uh, maybe that one is. I haven't seen it, but... I've, I've given up on Uva Bowl. I don't enjoy his movies. Right, like, if they were bad, but they were funny... I'd keep watching them, but I've seen I, I've seen Alone in the Dark. I've seen uh, Island of the Dead. I've seen Blood Rain. I want to say I've seen one more, but I don't remember which one. But it's like I di I didn't enjoy any of them. They're just bad. They're just like bad, bad. There's no heart. There's no soul. People have called Uva Bowl like. Oh, here's the the German Ed Wood or the modern Ed Wood, and I'm like, no, Uwe Boll is the opposite of Ed Wood. Ed Wood is a person with no money but tons of passion for his craft, whereas Uwe Boll is someone with lots of money who does not give a shit. He makes shitty tax loophole movies, tax evasion. Hooray for Uwe Boll! That's, it's weird to me that Uwe Boll has gotten defensive about his movies, because it's like, dude, they were a money... Or not, they weren't a money laundering scheme. They were a tax evasion scheme. Let's get our words right here. Even tax evasion is a little harsh. It was legal. What he was doing was legal. It was just... shady. And... <laughs> They kind of closed the tax loophole, I think in part because of Uva Boll, because, because of the shit Uva Boll was doing. I don't know, good things have come out of tax loopholes, countries' tax loopholes. I love exploitation. That's how we got Cronenberg. Canada w would give you like a big-ass tax break if your movie had a Canadian director. So people would just give David Cronenberg money and are like, yeah, whatever, do whatever you want with it, as long as I can write it off on my taxes. Yeah, no, uh, not, not an Uva Bowl fan. Um, probably won't ever speak about Uva Bowl and, I don't know, I, Michael and I talk about doing video game movie episodes of Hollow Victories and I'm like, there's so many. How do you just pick two? I don't know. Maybe there'll be an Uva Bowl Hollow Victories episode. But frankly, I really don't want to watch any more Uva Bowl. Maybe I'll watch In the Name of the King uh, at Jason's request here, but I just don't like Uva Bowl. This week, I am looking for your favorite female-centric action movies. I love me a good female-centric action movie. I want to hear what some of your favorites are, uh, because this week we're watching the first three movies in the four-movie Sister Street Fighter series. Um, there were more Sister Street Fighter movies than, than normal Street Fighter movies. There were three Street Fighter movies, but four Sister Street Fighter movies. So that's odd. Anyways, it's Sister Street Fighter, so that's, uh, Sister Street Fighter, Sister Street Fighter Hanging by a Thread, and fuck me, what is the third one called? Return of the Sister Street Fighter. What do you know? It's the same title as the second Street Fighter movie. Return of the Sister Street Fighter. Yeah, the first three Sister Street Fighter movies. So, uh... Bet you can't figure out what we're watching the week after that. Uh, until then, I'm Matt. Have a nice day.